Hello Tauruses and welcome to Deku Tarot. I'm going to be doing your weekly tarot reading for January 21st through the 27th of 2019. This week we're kicking it off with some extremely powerful energy um, on the 20th through the 21st with that full moon um, in Leo, which is a super moon, and a total lunar eclipse. It is going to be um, in zero degrees, uh, sorry, the sun is going to be in zero degrees in Aquarius, and the full moon in Leo is going to be at zero degrees as well. So it's going to make it very, very powerful for all of the fixed signs, and especially um, if you have any um, points in Aquarius or Leo. Okay, guys? Um, and if you want to hear more about the full moon, because there is a ton of energy surrounding it and a ton of things happening, and it's going to really shake things up um, for at least the next six months. So please check out my um, Leo Supermoon um, and Total Lunar Eclipse video that I have up. Okay, guys? Anyways, this reading is not going to resonate with every single one of you, and that's okay. But we'll see what comes through for you guys for the week of the 21st, the 27th of January. I'm using my Hobbit Tarot here to do your general energy and general reading, okay? So we're going to do a one-card general energy for the week here. General energy for the week of January 21st, the 27th for my Tauruses. What are we getting? We get the Eight of Cups. And that, to me, shows that we are moving beyond something. We're moving emotionally from one thing to another. We're leaving something behind here. The Eight of Cups can literally mean leaving something behind, but I always find it more of um, a releasing some type of emotional baggage and being able to move on from it, being able to emotionally go on to another level, um, ascend to a higher place um, in terms of your spirituality, in terms of your consciousness sometimes. Um, and the Eight of Cups shows you again that movement, especially spiritually and emotionally, because um, we're leaving something behind to move on towards, you know, something on a deeper level. We're looking for something deeper here. We're exploring deeper waters, looking for deeper commitments, emotional commitments. Um, we're raising the bar emotionally, it feels like, and spiritually this week again. Um, we're feeling this on a very spiritual level, it feels like. We're walking away from something negative that has happened in the past. We're walking away from a situation totally. We're leaving it in the past here. So again, if we've been attached unhealthily to something from the past, um, to a certain emotional cycle, or the way we're approaching something emotionally, or even just how we were feeling, it's like we're suddenly releasing that the clouds are parting and we're seeing, oh, I can move on from this and just leave it. You know, um, we're turning and striking out in a new direction and leaving something um, in the past behind here. So let's see what else is coming in this week for you guys. Generally, it just feels like an ascension. We're leaving the dark behind. We're coming out lighter. Okay, let's see. This week for my Tauruses. What will be coming in this week? The week of January 21st to the 27th for my Tauruses. What will be happening this week? What will be coming in for my Tauruses this week? into my Tauruses, January 21st, the 27th situations, the Seven of Wands. This is coming in for my Tauruses this week. What will they be experiencing? What will be happening in their lives this week? We get the High Priestess. It's coming in for my Tauruses this week. Getting three of coins, and I knew that card was going to come out. This also came out for Aries as well. It just feels like we're building new foundations this week. We've, uh, we're listening to our higher self. We're listening to that part of us that knows the knowledge. Because look at the way he's looking at that. Um, he's looking at the high priestess like he's getting some type of knowledge. He's like, okay, okay, I get it now. This is what I have to do. Hmm. Let's see. Continue to show me what's coming in this week for my Tauruses. What will be happening this week for my Tauruses. Tauruses this week, and we get the devil reversed. Nice. I feel like there's one more that wants to come out here, and it's the Queen of Cups, and she actually came up a couple times in Pisces reading. So, um, and this one came out in Aries. So again, check out the other readings. Um, this one also came out, I believe, in either Aries or Aquarius. There, I think it was Aquarius. But um, there's a lot of repeating cards. Again, check out the videos here: Sun, Moon, Rising. And Venus, or again, if you cross-watch for any of those signs for one reason or another, or, you know, you identify with them, listen to them, because 
there's a lot of repeating cards here, a lot of repeating messages of building new foundations, listening to our higher self and making the necessary adjustments, working on things. Also standing up for ourselves, continuing the fight. We're not giving up here. When I see the Seven of Wands, let's get some clarifiers though. Clarify the Seven of Wands and the High Priestess here. Clarify the Seven of Wands, High Priestess, what's bringing up these energies, what types of situations bring up these energies. And we get Temperance. Priestess, three of coins, clarify the energies there. Why these are coming up for my Tauruses this week, what is bringing up High Priestess and three of coins. Getting the world. Oh, so again, we're still getting those powerful major arcana vibes that are, you know, allowing all these things to happen, allowing these changes to happen, these, these energies to run through your week here. The three of coins and the devil reverse. Clarify those messages. Queen of coins. Queen of Cups, Devil Reverse and Queen of Cups here. Clarify the messages. The Moon, interesting. Um, interesting, interesting. Okay, so. And I talk about this in my, um, my Leo Super Moon or my Leo Full Moon video that I just did and put up, um, for the 21st of January. You know, I feel like, again, we're being confronted with some negative cycles, some negative instances, some things that we've been holding on to, anxieties, fears, etc., that are, are coming up around, um, again, this really intense eclipse energy, this full moon energy is really making us face these things. And it's going to, again, there's a, there's a sense of discomfort this week. There's an underlying feeling of being uncomfortable, being uncomfortable with our thoughts, our feelings. Why are we feeling this way this week? Um... But at the same time, in that discomfort, we're building new foundations. We're realizing why we're uncomfortable. We're balancing it out. Temperance here to me, especially with the Seven of Wands, is why are we so defensive? Why are we like on like the war path here? What are we feeling defensive about? Maybe we need to adjust here because maybe this energy is, you know, causing more disruption than good. Maybe we're being defensive about things that it kind of just feels like an on edge energy. Like for some reason our energy is off and we're feeling uncomfortable. So we're kind of taking it out on the world around us. We're coming off as frustrated. We don't want to deal with things. We don't want to do things. It's like a very, um, I can't push the bull type of energy there. And it's coming off as aggressive. And sometimes it feels like we're saying things that maybe we don't mean because we're being defensive. And it's because we're on a deeper level we're facing things, we're dealing with um, situations that needed to be balanced out, that needed to be dealt with there, with temperance and the high priestess. You know, these are situations that are coming up that it's time for us to deal with them. It's time for us to deal with these situations. You know, we have to look into the past or we might be frustrated because we realize that we're being defensive about something that we're holding on to from the past here. You know, and we need to look at that we need to understand that past. We need to understand the present now and why we're feeling this way. And we need to apply some moderation and, you know, unification or unifying these things or getting rid of things that don't serve us and re releasing them in order to really heal, in order to really move forward so that we can understand the messages that our higher self is trying to give us at this time. And the high, the high priestess to me, it says, you know, there's information that wants to come through and... It's very important about the end of this cycle, about releasing this energy so that we can move on and build something new. We're ending a cycle here. I mean, the world, the queen of coins, the three of coins here is at the middle. It's at the center of your reading. Um, whatever this Leo full moon, whatever this eclipse brought up for you, it feels very like a significant shift. Again, I'm getting this with all the... Um, the fixed signs that we're going through these significant shifts. We're going, we're looking at things that, you know, maybe weren't working, things that um, we need to deal with. Let me straighten these out, but, you know, on a deeper level, we're being guided. Sorry, I just wanted to make, I had to let the dog out for a second there, so I had to pause. Um, but coming back to this, you know, we had to, we have to, I mean, we have to pause here. We have to pause and evaluate the intuition, the messages that are coming through and not fight them. Because it feels like whatever is coming through here is the end of a cycle. And may we might be a little bit afraid of it. We might be nervous. We might be afraid to unify these energies. Um, with the temperance card here, it's saying that, you know, when we are finally able to resist the pull of opposing, you know, we're getting pulled in one way and the other, especially with our feelings. I want to do this. I want to do that. Or, you know, I want, I want, I want it this way, but I can't. And you're like, why? And you're realizing that maybe there's a pull in the opposite direction. Maybe we're afraid 
of, especially if this has to do with career, we might be afraid of success. We might be afraid of closing out this chapter where we have to fight for everything and hope for the best. But this is allowing us to get rid of anything that was holding us back here. We're building a new foundation if we had listened to our intuition, if we listened to the messages that are being imparted to us right now. You know, we're being guided by our intuition, by our, by our feelings, by our higher self at this time. It's coming in very powerfully and the universe is trying to show us what we need to fix in order to give us what we want. But we can't be afraid to listen to it. We can't be afraid to see and feel these messages, to feel these feelings. Whatever is coming in could feel, make you feel like very disrupted, very on edge, again, very uncomfortable. And that came up in that um, full moon reading. So again, check that out because I'll go more into that there. But there is a sense of discomfort as we close out this chapter because we're needing to face some things that are uncomfortable, some changes that need to be made that are very uncomfortable. And again, with the world and the three of pentacles, I just have this feeling like we're, we're moving on to a brand new chapter here. There's a huge shift. You know, we're achieving something, we're attaining something, we're um, in a lot of work situations, we're attaining the recognition of our abilities, we're getting to where we want to get to, but some adjustments need to be made on a base level here on how we're learning and how we're um, continuing to work on it. Again, this is not the time to rest and sit down. We have to continue to um, push forward. The Queen of Coins, the Three of Coins, it's manifesting and being comfortable and solid in our manifesting. She is almost like a lower echo of the Empress energy and this is your card here as well. Um, it's saying, you know, we ha we can manifest what we want, we can build what we want here, we can create whatever it is that we desire, but we're going to have to change on a base level. What do we need to learn? What do we need to rework um, on a basic level here? What needs to be fixed up? Because when this cycle closes, it's, it's allowing us to, you know, get to our best possible self here, get to this point where we're safe, we're comfortable, we're steady, we can feel solid. And yet there's this moon here that's saying, you know, maybe we might be afraid. With the devil reverse there, I feel like this is saying we might be afraid to, sorry, I was trying to move them all over, but it's just going to be difficult, so I'm just not going to do it. Um, <laughs> but we might be afraid here. We might be afraid to see what happens when we get rid of um, the things that are holding us back. We might be almost afraid of what's coming in. And what we need to understand is that our intuition is trying to help us. Even a Pisces, except we're getting the um, Queen of Cups and the Moon here. At the end of the reading, it could be a Pisces, it could be a Cancer type of energy. I'm getting more Pisces, but um, we could have a negative cycle overturn there with a Pisces if it has something to do with them. Or again, with this moon, it doesn't have to be a specific sign, but an energy of opening our opening our heart and accepting what's coming in because it's trying to give us the best possible, you know, path forward. It's trying to give us intuition, knowledge, um, you know, heartfelt appreciation and joy um, for what is coming in here, emotional joy. And we can't let it be stunted by this moon feeling that we've gotten used to of fear of not getting that success, of not attaining what we've wanted. This is real. And we're getting out of this devil energy. Whatever, whatever sort of negative cycle we've been in, if it seems to be leaving to me now. It seems like whatever atta unhealthy attachments, unhealthy belief systems that we were holding, they're gone because, again, we've built something new. We listen to our higher self. So, again, guys, don't take on this energy. Take on temperance and allow it to come in and adjust willingly. Because if we fight this energy, we're not going to get to our best selves. We're not going to get to where we want to get to. And I know that you guys want to get there, right? Who doesn't want to get there? We have to get rid of that worried, that constricted, confused feeling here of what's going on. You know, we can't get lost in our fantasies, which are holding us back here is what it feels like. Our fantasies are fearful. They feel dark. They feel scary. Like, oh, everything, I'm suddenly just going to lose everything. You know... Try to find your way back to reality. Try to ground yourself. Remember this week because there can be a lot of fantasy energies, you know, floating around. And again, I talked about that during my full moon video. So check that out too because again, that energy is really seeping in here. It was in last week and now it's in this week. And I'm not surprised at all. I'm really not because it's very, very powerful and it's shifting everybody and you are a fixed sign. It's going to shift you. It's involved with two fixed signs. They're all on the same, you know, axis there. You got to think that they all have something to do with each other. These shifts are felt in all the fixed signs even more so than the mutable, but the mutable are ones are going to feel it too, so don't even worry there. Um, but yeah, with that, I just I love that devil energy reverse there. I love that because it feels like we're getting rid of, um, we're, we're, we're coming to, I don't know, what is it? 
it's like all of a sudden our blind spots are thrown in our face here. We're seeing the blind spots. We're seeing where we've messed things up, where we've let things go, where we allowed things to kind of get out of control, dark fantasies to get out of control. Our fears, our anxieties, our um, bad decision making, whatever, anything that's held us back. And I feel like for a lot of us, it's anxiety, it's fear of the unknown, of what's to come. Anyways, Taurus, let's move on to your love reading because this could go on and on. It's very, very powerful. Very powerful. And again, I feel like we're preparing for that um, shift um, into Uranus for the next seven years. And it's just, you guys are feeling it very powerfully because, again, right now Aries is at 28 degrees when the, um, you know, when that supermoon happens on the 21st, when that eclipse happens. Um, and that's only two degrees off of Taurus. We're coming into that in March. It's coming. It's on its way in. All right, let's see what's coming in for love this week for you guys. I'm going to use my, um, what ones do I want to use for you guys for love this week? I think I'm going to use my Klimt Tarot here. All right, love and relationships for my Tauruses this week. Love, romance, relationships. What is coming in this week, January 21st to the 27th for my Tauruses. If you guys want to book a private reading also, all that information is right below this video in the description box. All righty. All right, 21st to the 27th of January for love and relationships for my singles, my couples, my Tauruses. We get, I knew this card was going to come out. I saw it in my mind's eye. This is so weird. I don't know. It's this crazy moon energy here. It's this lunar energy. It's, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like picking up on these cards before they even come out. It's kind of crazy. Um, I mean, not that that's that crazy, but just like I knew she was going to be there. The Queen of Chalices. Queen of Chalices. Love her. All right, let's see what else is coming up here for my Tauruses and love and romance for this week. Love and romance for my Tauruses. We get the Nine of Wands reversed. Awesome. High Priestess again. There she is in the center. Love and romance for my Tauruses. What's coming in this week for their relationships, for their love. My loving relationships for my Tauruses will be coming in in this week. They get the Eight of Pentacles. I feel like there's one more here. My Tauruses for this week for love, romance. <coughs> We're getting the lovers. Wow. Okay. Yep. That was the one that wanted to come out there. That was the one that wanted to come out there. Um, crazy, right? Okay. So, very powerful reading here. I mean, we only have two major arcan here, one in the center, one in the end. Um, the Queen of Cups here, she just feels very soft, very open. Um, again, if she is a sign, again, I'm getting this Pisces energy here this week. Getting a Pisces or a Cancer energy, or again, it could be a Scorpio, but, um, with that moon energy before... And seeing the queen, I often associate the queen with Pisces. Um, I don't know. I just feel like some of us here are dealing with a Pisces. That's come up a couple times. So again, check out the reading for Pisces. Um, I think that they actually got your card in their reading too. So if some of us are dealing with a Pisces, especially in love, um, check that out because it definitely came up for both of you guys. Um, but the queen of cups here, she's, you know, she's open hearted. She's, you know, sweet. She's kind. She talks about love and emotions, you know, generosity, um, you know, having an open heart, having a truly open heart to love, being open to love and everything in the joy, you know, and the joy that it brings in. You know, there's an open level of giving and receiving with her. She's always going to be there. She's always going to support and love you type of energy here. Um, and I don't ever really get a withholding type of energy from the Queen of Cups. It's just that she feels how she feels. She's kind. She's caring. Um, and she's there. Let's get some clarifiers, though, before I go on as, or as I kind of run through this here. The Nine of Wands reverse is, you know, opening up. We're opening up our boundaries, our, our barriers here. It feels like whatever we've been closed off to, it feels like it's finally coming undone. And we can finally release it. Sometimes the Nine of Wands can mean other things, but I often see it as we're not so, like, ready to go. Like, ready to fight, ready to block it off, ready to yell at it before we even, you know, um, not to judge a book by its cover kind of energy. Like, we're, we just expect everything to go wrong, so we're not even going to step into it. We're just going to close it off and send it on its way. But the Nine of Wands reversed is... It's a lot more open, open to seeing what's really going on here. Um, let's see. Let's get some clarifiers here. Let's get some clarifiers, though. 
Queen of Chalices, Nine of Wands reverse. Clarify the messages and clarify what is happening in the love lives and in the relationships with my Tauruses. In terms of love, love energy, relationships. My Tauruses for January 21st to the 27th. You're getting, oh my God, again, the Three of Pentacles. We're building something here. Yeah, we're building new foundations and we're not afraid to do so. We're trusting where we are now. We're ready to keep building. It doesn't have to be a female either. It can be, um, I, again, I don't gender my lower, I don't gender the cards really other than the emperor and the empress. And even those, I mean, it is distinctly male and female energy, but it doesn't have to be a male or female. Anyways, Nine of Wands reversed and the High Priestess. Clarify the energies that are bringing up the Nine of Wands reversed and High Priestess situations. They're bringing up these energies. We get the Hangman reversed. Okay. What else are we getting here? Let me this up a little. The High Priestess and the Eight of Pentacles for my Tauruses. High Priestess and the Eight of Pentacles for my Tauruses. What is she communicating? What is bringing up the High Priestess and the Eight of Pentacles for the love lives and in the love lives and relationships? My Tauruses for January 21st to the 27th. Getting the moon. Again, there's the moon. Eight of Pentacles, the lovers. The lovers. Um, we get the Two of Pentacles reversed. I feel like there's one more clarifier just because it's feeling really hot right now. The lovers. Clarify the lovers here for my Tauruses. In terms of love and romance. For this week of January 21st to the 27th. Let's bring up the lovers. And we get... The Knight of Wands. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put these guys to the side here so we can look at them a little bit better. And I hope you guys can't hear Scylla snoring in the background because she is very loud. She sounds like a human person snoring. Um, and if you guys can't hear her, I apologize. That's why I usually have um, water sounds and other sounds on because the animals like to hang out with me and then they sleep. And a lot of them snore, <laughs> like people, especially her. So, hope you guys can't hear that. <laughs> Anyways, um, the Queen of Chalice is here with the Three of Pentacles. It's, you know, again, it feels like we're building on something. We're building our love life here. We're building up our heart. We're building up our, you know, our strength and our love here. We're releasing ourselves from anything that we've, you know, been holding back on. Whatever it is that we have yet to, that we were afraid to face, it feels like we're understanding things now. We're understanding how we feel. We're ready to build upon something new here. When you get, you know, the queen of, you know, just this whole square right here to me feels like we have figured something out. Something, but because we were more open in our heart here, we're, we, are, we are able to build onto a new foundation here in terms of our relationships, in terms of, you know, it's almost like when I see the Three of Pentacles, I almost see it's like um, three aspects that put together like a person, you know, our physical, our spiritual, and, you know, our, I'm just saying, I don't know, I'm trying to like figure out, wait, never mind, you know, I'm not going to get into that now. I keep like saying it wrong, and I'm not going to get caught up on it because it is a general reading. <laughs> Anyways, it's just like... We're, again, the three pentacles, you know, represent those three pillars that build up a relationship that, I mean, well, in this case, a relationship. But, um, we've opened our heart and now we can have something new here. And it feels really, really, really incredible, but also terrifying. You know, our higher self is trying to say, hey, um, here's some messages, like, I'm trying to show you something, I'm trying to show you something, so listen. Because, again, this lunar energy this week is bringing forth a lot of messages. We're going to understand something. We're going to understand, you know, where we've been doing things wrong, what we built onto that was wrong. Um, there's, there's something that's telling me just, you know, not to distract ourselves this week. And, again, this came out in that full moon reading. Don't distract yourselves with what's coming in this week, especially within our relationships. We're really feeling something come in and we need to be open to it because whatever this is, is going to help us, you know, build a life that we want. It's going to show us how we can get to the lovers. How can we work to get there? What do we need to do to get there? We could be, again, seeing like our relationships and seeing things in the future here. Again, some of us could be um, maybe even getting pregnant here or deciding that we want to have a child. So maybe information with that. There's a lot of 
female energy here um, that might have to do with that for some of you. However, I think that some of us here are reaching these pivotal points where we're realizing, you know, we're being more open to what's coming in. And if some of us have been in relationships where we haven't been happy, you know, we could be deciding to drop one thing and open ourselves up to following that passion again. Or again, we could be stressed about how much passion is within the relationship and trying to introduce more in. We could realize that, you know, maybe we've been so busy, maybe we've been working so hard on, you know, building things up with money, building up, you know, finances that we haven't taken the time to enjoy, enjoy each other like we used to. To have, you know, passionate physical love or even just, you know, remembering those times or having passion, you know, just by, you know, having a good time together, enjoying each other's company like we used to. You know, there is... A demonstration of what we need to do here in order to make it happen in order to put in that work we have to demonstrate to our partners into our in our relationships here that we're willing to put aside anything that is extra anything that is not working here and put the effort in there that we're willing to do that that we can do that because eight of pentacles says that you're almost there but you can't give up that yes it does require work does require effort to create this like she's you know pregnant with a baby here um, but in order to do that, we have to shift our focus from a bunch of things or, you know, not knowing if this person or this situation is right for us to, you know, fully going headfirst into it with passion like we used to. So again, for some of us that are in relationships, um, that could be what's coming up here. For those of us that are single, it feels like we need to be open to love here. We need to change our perspective because we're getting messages about, you know, how we have been in relationships and maybe we've been focused on too many things. Maybe we've um, been in a problem where we can't choose between two people or, you know, our focus isn't on the person that it should be on or, you know, the relationship that it should be on, but it's on a bunch of people or a couple different people or, again, we're, it's split somehow here. It's interesting it feels like for a lot of us we feel like we're, we're building a new foundation we've come to these terms but we have to also realize that sometimes when you see the hermit i'm sorry the hangman reverse it could be that we're ignoring something and we're trying to refuse to see a situation for what it is but it does feel like that's going to be thrown up in our face this week whether we want to see it or not we have to be open to it this week we have to be open to whatever is coming in about our love life because it's trying to either, it's trying to make or break it for us for the best. It's trying to show us what is best here. What is your best, um, what do you need to change? What do you need to shift? You have to be open to understanding it. You have to be open to the criticism or, you know, whatever sort of situation it brings up for you. You have to be open to it. You have to allow it to come in. It can, it will come in and it won't be as bad as you guys think it is. I don't think so. You know, it will show us how to move forward more passionately how to follow our passions and be that person to, you know, bring that energy back into relationships, bring that energy back into our lives. Um, you know, it's really interesting, you know. There's a sense of newness here as we're stepping into something new. We're stepping into this amazing love, you know, the smooch. This is the Klimt the smooch, my favorite lover's card. It's beautiful. You know, we want to have that ethereal, amazing like life-altering love but we have to be open to it we have to be open to the transformations and you know commitments that we need to make here some of us here it feels like our i feel like tauruses lately have been almost like commitment foes we're afraid to commit to something because we're afraid of where it's going to take us and what it's going to do to us we have to be open to that we have to be we have to have an open heart to whatever is coming in in terms of commitments in terms of love in terms of relationships especially this week i feel like it's hitting us there a lot because of all that venusian energy that is coming about so again, guys, um, check out that full moon in Leo video. This is a very interesting, and I feel like, again, it's hitting all of you guys in so many different ways, and I, I can go on forever, but the messages are general, and I don't want to, like, get way too into it right now because it is just so much. It's just so much coming out right now. I almost just knocked over, like, three decks. Um, <laughs> so, again, check that out. There's a lot of messages coming in, a lot of repeating cards, um, throughout the reading so check out your readings for your sun moon rising and venus okay tauruses and especially for the fixed signs if you have a lot of placements in fixed signs this is going to be a very powerful time for you and again cannot stress enough that i think that that full moon video will help us in allowing these messages to come in for the best okay so check out that video all right tauruses what will help my tauruses for the week of january 21st to the 27th 2019 what do they need to know what will help them this week and we get winter wow awesome 
Um, the pause, sorry, the sacredness of pausing. I almost said it backwards. The pause sacred. What? <laughs> Lightly I step, the earth falls asleep, a lullaby to rest and pause, the soul secrets to keep. Should the winter card appear to you, it's time to let what no longer serves you die away. <clears throat> Where it seems natural and right to let things that have been bothering you for some time die back, take real action to change those things. Anything that is superfluous, extra, and burdensome, release it, okay? Anything that you realize that is holding you back, because it's going to come up this week, and try not to block that those energies out. Try not to distract yourself. When you get these feelings, this discomfort in, feel it. Try to understand and try to see where it's coming from and why, okay? Because we need to allow the things that no longer serve us to die away. And the universe is trying to put, throw those in our face, say, here, Taurus, this is what needs to be changed. You have to stop doing this or you have to release this or this needs to be worked on in order for you to get what you want. And you have to be open to that, okay? And I know that's kind of hard sometimes for earth signs, but we need to be open to this change. We need to trust that it's trying to bring us to our best life, okay, Tauruses? So um, trust that this week there will be a lot of change, a lot of shifts, um, especially within, that are going to shift us for the next, like, six months or so and really help us become the person we want to be. All right, Tauruses, again, check out your weeklies for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus because there's lots of repeating cards and important messages this week. Um, also, check out the Leo full moon video in your 2019 reading because it does go over everything that will be happening and all the shifts and important messages um, for 2019 through, 20, um, through 2020 for you guys, okay? Thank you guys so much. Um, please remember to subscribe and share. It helps the channel. And when I get to 10,000 subscribers, we're going to do a huge giveaway, okay, guys? Thank you so much.